Okay, so this notebook is on regression analysis um, again, and uh, in this case, we're looking at ways in which maybe not, maybe your assumptions haven't been as blatantly violated, um, but uh, in this case, it's ways that other things can happen. I, it's still this, I guess this is still violation of assumptions, but they're less like your whole model falls apart and more like weird things happen to your estimated coefficients. So here's a quick example. This is biased noise. Um, biased noise, is, this is really just gets back to small sample size. You should really try to have as big a sample size as possible all the time. But in this small sample size, you can see is that the noise has a downward bias. So the intercept has been estimated to be uh, negative 0.4. So if you're running this and trying to determine the alpha and beta of an asset to another, you say, oh my goodness, my algorithm has a negative 0.4 alpha, which is horrible, right? You like never use this. But as you can see, as you get more uh, data points here, the intercept converges to uh, zero. And basically you were just looking at um, a small sample size bias, so small sample size bias. Um, something else you can do I think that's cool uh, is Seaborn has this nice regression plot and you just put in um, your data points and it draws the regression line and then it takes the standard error and it says, well, what's within my confidence interval, what is the uh, most extreme slope in this direction it could be? And it draws that one. And then it says within my confidence interval, what's the most extreme slope in this direction? It draws that one and it fills this in. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing all the possible space, like basically the, the cloud of possible regression lines within the 95% confidence interval. And I think this is a nice way to look at your regression um, versus just more of a naive approach like this. Um, so another big problem is regime changes. And that's when like the data generating process changes. Um, so an example might be, let's say that uh, Britain decided to actually start using the Euro next year. Like that would just completely shake up so many things, right? Like the foreign exchange markets would undergo like a huge chaotic shift. Tons of stuff might be pegged to the pound. So like, where would it go now? Um, this is an example of like, you're just your underlying data generating process would change. And uh, you just, you know, like you have to, you, you're not gonna be able to handle it except that, but you should try to test for it, right? You should try to test, are the conditions that my model is based on still present in the data? And then regularly test for these conditions, you know, like every time your algorithm runs, um, just check, do a couple simple tests. Are certain tests still coming up as positive, right? And these tests will be different for every algorithm and you kind of have to think about your, your models and figure out what tests are necessary. As an example, so here's one where if you just draw the regression line through this data set, um, you get something that's useful, not never going to be a good prediction. But these regression lines are actually pretty good predictions for this data set. Um, the problem is that there's a regime change here, and then all of a sudden your regression line changes a ton. So what you have to be, what you have to do is basically at every point in time look at the the recent, like maybe like take a small window snapshot and say, is my last 30 days uh, of regression line, like it's a regression line to the last 30 days within that standard error of the regression line that I'm using for my model, right? And if it's not, um, you can see clearly here that like, let's say the standard error for this regression line is like some cone coming out like this. You can see that this regression line would clearly be outside the standard error for your model. So you could say, uh-oh, um, as soon as you got to this point, like stop for a second, we need to reevaluate whether or not our algorithm is still gonna make money. So again, it's just like smoke alarms that you can put in your models uh, to make sure that you're not gonna run into, uh, to make sure that your fires are gonna be caught before they burn your money. Um, again, this is the uh, another example of multicollinearity. Um, we just put it, we're actually, we actually basically put very similar examples in all three of these notebooks just because we like the notebooks to stand by themselves. So I'm actually not gonna go over this example. I'm gonna go over a slightly different example in the next notebook. Uh, this is really the, kind of the same, the same example uh, as the last notebook. So feel free to look over it yourself, but it's, you've kind of already seen most of it.